If you wanted to learn about exotic birds, what might you do? You could go bird watching. Maybe you would visit the zoo. Or perhaps you'd learn by caring for a pet bird. These are examples of experiential learning, a theory pioneered by John Dewey. He proposed that learning can happen everywhere because experiences are everywhere. Dewey claimed that learning involves observing, doing, or living through experiences. This chart breaks down some of the essential elements of the experiential learning model. In experiential learning, learners decide the goals and what they have learned by thinking about what has taken place and their position within that process. The teacher's role is to create an environment that allows students to play a role in developing their own knowledge. In an experiential environment, teachers also help students analyze what has taken place. Immersive environments in Second Life first-person perspective games, flying simulators, and scenario-based online tutorials. All of these examples attempt to create real-world experiences for learners. Before technology, learners were often limited to experiences in their own physical world. But virtual experience has expanded the concept of experience, making more experiences and learning accessible to more people, regardless of distance or physical capability. Let's revisit the bird's example. Caring for a bird makes a lot more sense when you're actually doing it, right? And when someone more experienced shows you how to care for your pet bird and helps you understand why those techniques are important, that's situated cognition and cognitive apprenticeship. In situated cognition, knowing is inseparable from doing. In the example discussed, the knowledge of caring for a bird is best applied to actually caring for a bird. And when a master teaches the skills, it's similar to an apprenticeship. Teachers are experts or masters. They give students the opportunity to observe, engage in, invent, and discover in contexts that make sense. They model, coach, and provide scaffolding. Learners observe, apply, and gradually take on more responsibility for executing tasks within the authentic environment. More than 80% of the 16 to 20 year olds in the Swiss educational system learn through apprenticeship combined with one to two days of schooling per week. Similar systems exist in Germany and Denmark. The Dual T project shown here is working to improve the educational technology for this learning model. Suppose your school has been forced to cut funding for sports. Now imagine the principal challenging the student body to think of ways to fund the program. This is an example of problem-based learning. Problem-based learning, as well as project-based learning, are based on constructivism. They focus on real-life situations to encourage and facilitate learning. So what's the difference between project and problem-based? Take a look at this chart. Project-based may or may not be based on a problem. It is student-led. I think of science fairs. Problem-based is initially led by the teacher, who poses a single problem for all the students to solve. This makes me think of UIL academic competitions. Project and problem-based learning are learner-led. Students choose a path to learning and use critical thinking and collaboration to create knowledge. The teacher is a facilitator who challenges students with questions to encourage learning. Internet research, blogging, instant messaging, podcasts, videos, and social media are just a few ways students can demonstrate their learning when the project or problem-based approach is used. The iTech competition is a great example of using hands-on activities to focus individuals and groups in real-life situations. Layering in robotics makes it a good example of an instructional technology technique teachers could use to increase motivation among students to learn science and math. Let's revisit the sports funding cuts example. Imagine if students could build their funding arguments by watching debates on funding. That's what a teacher using Anchored Instruction might do. Anchored Instruction was pioneered by the Cognition and Technology Group at Vanderbilt University. It's based on social constructivist theory and is all about situating a theme, problem, or case study and using storytelling video as a foundation. Technology is at its core. 
As with most of the constructivist theories, teachers using anchored instruction serve as facilitators. They provide the story, explain the activity, and provide questions or problems. This chart outlines the phases. Learners in an anchored instruction observe, identify information to solve problems, and work towards solutions, relying on cooperative techniques and community Digital video is a technology that can help deliver anchored instruction. It allows students to chunk information from the stories using time codes in the video to note information needed to solve problems. The most famous example of anchored instruction is the Jasper series. It uses a story with real characters to present a problem that the students must solve. They replay the story as many times as needed to find all the necessary data.